Uh, we at Hamli are focused on Palestinian digital rights. We focus on documenting and monitoring threats and violations to Palestinian digital rights. Of course, those violations come in different shapes and forms. I am not a citizen of Israel, but I have no other passport except my identity, which proves that I'm a Jerusalemite resident, even though my family goes back even before Israel in Jerusalem. However, I have little rights, and I know that in Jerusalem, this um, laboratory of mass surveillance is probably the strongest. Uh, similar like cities in the West Bank, but in the Amnesty International report, they used Jerusalem as a case study because I live in a place, in a space where there are um, too many facial recognition cameras for every per capita, per person. Um, this is something that is created to create this environment that we're living in a panopticon. We are always being watched. Our behavior is monitored. So they don't just watch uh, for security purposes. They watch in a way to make sure that Palestinians who have little rights and are fighting against an occupation feel like they're always scared to speak up, uh, not willing to share their political opinions. They are unable to participate politically, to uh, practice their right to assembly, their right to association. Sometimes it prevents people from their right to access to free expression and to access information. So it all plays part and part with the work I do right now with Hamle. Hamle is concerned about digital rights and digital space. It fights for the digital rights of Palestinians. And as you all know, digital rights or internet rights are extension of human rights. It's something uh, in the offline world, there's uh, human rights that are recognized, protected, promoted by international laws and conventions. However, digital rights are part of those. If I want to list them clearly, the right to access the internet, the right to freedom of expression and opinion, the right to data protection and privacy, the right to assembly and association. If I'm going to talk about the context of the last period, the numbers that we're documenting are staggering. The violations we're documenting are st staggering, not only by the Israeli government, but also by major online platforms like Meta, like X and uh, TikTok and other platforms. The issue that we face in this situation is that Palestinians are um, silenced and suppressed. Their voices are um, restricted online. And you know, online space, especially on Meta's platforms, is, is crucial for Palestinians to actually speak to the world and to provide information to build context on the reality of what's happening on the ground. So since this, since October 7, we've documented a lot of violations of Palestinian rights online. This is something we've been documenting for years ago, but now it's much, much, much worse in the fact that, for example, on Meta's platforms, the main problem is that um, they censor uh, Palestinians, nar Palestinian narratives, Palestinian voices. Uh, journalist accounts get restricted. Uh, news agencies uh, get their content taken down because of different policies by companies like Meta. We don't understand how those get taken down. We see that there's discrimination. There is disproportionate targeting of Palestinians online, but we don't see the same thing happening for Israeli uh, news and uh, Israeli incitement, for example. So we've highlighted how those platforms are disproportionately silencing Palestinians while protecting the narrative of the Israeli government and the Israelis who would justify even more violence on the ground in Palestine. This goes hand in hand with our documentation on incitement and hate speech online. We are witnessing a huge surge in incitement and hate speech that targets Palestinians online. Of course, our concern here is that this hate speech and incitement reflects to direct harm against Palestinians on the ground. And we believe that companies like Meta and Twitter X have a responsibility to prevent the spread of hate speech and incitement against Palestinians online. Those companies have not developed enough mechanisms to address the threat against Palestinians through Hebrew language. Um, basically, what we're seeing here is that content that incites violence against Palestinians is spreading at a very fast scale online, and it reflects the policy of the Israeli government and the Israeli military, who are justifying extreme violence against Palestinians in Gaza and elsewhere. 
This goes hand in hand with statements made by the Israeli Prime Minister, the Israeli Minister of Defense, uh, different Israeli ministers and members of the Knesset who have called to erase Gaza, to wipe out Gaza, who have used a rhetoric that is considered to be genocidal to promote more violence against Palestinians. Of course, we have to keep in mind that when we document hate speech and incitement online, this is happening within a context of grave violations of the Geneva Conventions. This is happening in a context of war crimes and international uh, violations of international laws that are so blatant. Those platforms online, Twitter, X, Facebook, when they are silencing Palestinians or allowing this kind of hate speech to spread uncontrollably, they are facilitating more violence against Palestinians who do not have their digital rights safeguarded online, in the online space. Another thing that we are monitoring a lot in the recent uh, period is repression, a lot of repression. We know that there is a mass surveillance system that is deployed against mainly Palestinians in the West Bank, Palestinians in East Jerusalem. We know people in Gaza are besieged, are unable to control access to their telecommunications. We know that Israel completely controls the telecommunications infrastructure for, for Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, as this was evident when Israel shut down connectivity to Gaza three times over the past few weeks. Just by a press of a button, Gaza has no, no phones, no internet, nothing, because Israel controls that infrastructure. So people already know that everything is being monitored. Their activity on their phones, their online activity is being monitored. We know that they are making laws that allow them to arrest us for online activity. We know that it goes hand in hand with the fact that uh, they are now forcing Palestinians, especially in my city in East Jerusalem, to hand in their phone to the police who attack them. And the police would look at the phone, would go through it, would copy all its data, and then create a case against those people. So, you know, they don't have evidence to stop you. They don't, don't suspect you to have done anything criminal. But because you're Palestinian and you don't have enough rights to protect you in this regard, Israeli forces can take your phone, access it by force, um, and then based on what they see, if they see telegram channels, if they see WhatsApp messages, anything that they could see deem suspicious, they could arrest you and interrogate you on that basis. So the surveillance, the repressive laws, the silencing online, and the violence that we're witnessing on the ground, it all goes hand in hand and makes it a very difficult, uh, you know, a digital front, uh, a very difficult time for us to actually express our opposition to the current policies, to uh, create uh, an assembly, to, to, to access our right to association and uh, freedom of assembly. If we're not able to organize on a basic level, we're not able to create the mechanisms to dismantle this uh, system of oppression, for example. We're not able to oppose the occupation freely. We, can, we cannot dismantle the occupation and restore Palestinian rights. I don't know what is happening in Gaza, who is speaking. I only get one, one picture, like the mainstream media. Social media becomes very similar, where I get one picture which is always, almost always biased against Palestinians and does not give a proper context for, the, for, for what is happening. And people start not understanding the reality. So we want neutrality on those platforms. We want met companies like Meta and others to respect non-discrimination, to allow for everyone to have a safe, equal space to express. Freedom of expression is not for some people and not for others. Freedom of expression is a global uh, uh, right for all peoples. Palestinians must not be discriminated against on those online platforms. If Israel is using repressive technologies and repressive surveillance to oppress Palestinians, that's Israel. We can find a different way to hold them accountable. But major online platforms must not be complicit in this suppression of Palestinian voices because this is the last space we have to tell the world genocide is happening, occupation is killing people, apartheid is real.